Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy, and today I have a glorious lineup of 18-year-old Scotch whiskeys on the table. I'm gonna try these blind and let you know which one I think is the best. Let's see what we got going on here. It's the Aaron 18-year-old, 46% ABV. Really like what they're doing with the new uh, label design, bottle design on the Aaron. Boone Haven, 18, uh, personal favorite of mine, 46.3% ABV. It's a Glendronic 18. This is the 2018 bottling, 46%. Uh, Oloroso exclusive maturation in this one. Glen Goyne 18, 43%. Highland Park 43. Johnny Walker 18, this replaces their Platinum, 40% uh, ABV, the only blended on the table. The uh, old discontinued Lefroy 18, the green tin, 48% uh, ABV. Long Row 18, 46. The old Macallan, this is the 1996 vintage, 43% ABV. Old Poldney, uh, new core range, 18 year old, 46%, yes, 46 on the on the old Poldney. Uh, Springbank 18, glorious pour, uh, 46 on this. And the Talisker, uh, 18 year old, 45.8% on the Talisker. I'm gonna go through these, I'm gonna put them randomly into three brackets of three. Uh, the winners will move on and face each other and we'll see which one is gonna come out on top. Huge thanks to Jasper. He graciously donated, uh, lent me a couple of these bottles, actually pretty much all of them, uh, for this rundown. So thank you so much, Jasper, for that. Let's get at it. All right, this is how it's gonna work. Each whiskey has been randomly assigned into one of four brackets. I won't know which whiskey I'm drinking when. I'm simply just picking which one I think is the best. The winners will advance on to face off against each other. And I'm gonna use one wild card where I can bring one eliminated whiskey back into the final to face off against the others. So let's get at it. All right, starting off with the first bracket of whiskeys. I got the three poured out here. Uh, I got some notes. I'm just gonna write down some stuff and think about each one. Got my water. Uh, I don't know what one these are. I'll put the what bottles they are here so you can follow along uh, one, two, and three. So let's get started with uh, whiskey one. It's got a little bit of like coastal kind of feel to it. Some nice um, saltiness. I definitely say this has a little, little touch of peat, I'd say. Mm, okay, definitely got some Campbelltown uh, notes to this one for sure. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think I know this has got this has either got to be the Spring Bank or the Long Row. I'd say. Man, that's good. That is good. Really good stuff. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be such a treat. Glass two. Not getting too much on the nose. Very light. Definitely some fruitiness to this one, like orchard kind of fruit. Very, very light. Not much going on with this one, I'd say. Whiskey number three. Some nice uh, vanillas and uh, a little honey in here. Mm. Some nice uh, multi characteristic on this one on the finish. Really good. This is good. Definitely uh, glass one and three are my favorites. Number two, wasn't really feeling that much. Um, not sure what it is, but. Definitely lighter in um, in comparison to uh, to one and three. Um, three was pretty solid, but I think the clear winner on this bracket for sure is number one. Uh, so I'm going to go with number one. Uh, wild card. I don't think I need to bring anything back. It was a pretty clear decision on this one. So I'm going to go glass number one. Moving on. Let's see the results. Bracket one here. Results. See what I'm advancing. Uh, so number one was Springbank 18. Springbank 18 was number one. Uh, number two was Johnny Walker 18. Yeah, wasn't really feeling that. Just pretty light in profile, and I guess it makes sense with the 18, uh, with the 40% uh, ABV. Oh, and number three was Highland Park 18. Uh, it is a really nice whiskey, a favorite of mine for sure. Um, but I think I made the right decision here as far as what I like. Uh, Springbank 18. Moving on to the next round. All right, bracket two, uh, three more whiskeys. Here they are here. Let's start with the first glass. Let's see what we got. Okay, kind of like a um, light kind of sherry. Nice fruity notes. Really nice notes, actually. Let's go palette. Mm. Definitely some sherry, for sure. Actually pretty heavy on the sherry. Nice finish. Good vanilla notes, too. It's a good one. That's really good. Always that. Glass number two. Some brininess on this one. 
Okay, definitely some peat. Getting a little bit of like coastal notes, some peat in there, some like fresh like apples too. Greenness is good. Some nice salt characteristic. That one's really good. It's gonna be a tough one. Completely different styles, but both really nice. All right, class number three. Oh, another Peter. Man, that's good. So this one is very like mineral uh, forward. Definitely get like the wet rocks kind of note to this. Oh wow, that's Pete. That's got to be the Lefroig. That has to be Lefroig. I mean, that's just so much Pete. Like the Froig 18, not as much Pete as other little Froigs. But I mean, that one's pretty obvious that that's, that's the Lefroig. I mean, really nice. The finish is just forever on that, on that whiskey. 48% on the Lefroig 18. This could definitely be 48%. So completely different styles here. Well, I guess like two and three, um, I thought that both had peat in it. Number three definitely has a larger amount. Uh, this is gonna be a tough one because it's like do I go with like the nice peated whiskey or the really heavy sherry forward whiskey? I mean, I could be eliminating a really nice whiskey here Better do them again That's the thing with this. They're all I mean all these whiskeys are pretty solid So I'm gonna be eliminating some really good ones for sure Bracket one seemed like a no-brainer easy decision this one a little more difficult but I think I gotta go to glass three I think glass three, the finish on glass three, super long, nice peat, um, lots of complexity, coastal notes, um, there's some fruit in there. There's actually kind of like, I mean, kind of like stone fruit kind of vibe to it, as well as like, um, you know, saltiness, brininess, really nice peat note. I, it's got to be, the, if it's not the Lefroy, I'm my palate is way off. So I'm going to go glass three, advancing. Okay, so glass one was the Aaron 18. Really impressed with the Aaron 18, actually. For how much that whiskey cost, like around 100 or so, 125-ish Canadian dollars. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, number two was the Long Row 18, and of course three was the Froig 18, yeah. The Froig was pretty obvious, I think. Um, and then number two, the Long Row makes sense, because it did have some peat in there. All right, well, sadly, the Aaron and the Long Row 18 are gone. The Freud 18 advances. All right, bracket three, three more whiskeys. Here they are. Let's see what we got. Glass one. Nice sherryness to this. I guess like pretty much all of these have a sherry influence for the most part, I think. Nice rich sherry. Lots of like prunes and figs on that one. Really rich. That's really good. Really, really nice. Number two. Another great sherry nose. So that one, not as like robust of like the prune fig note, but a little bit of it. Some nice chocolate in there. Again, that's a really nice one. Some similarities and some differences in those first two. I think I would prefer one over it as of right now. Let's try number three. So a little different on this one. Not as heavy sherry, I'd say. Nice creaminess. Really rich vanillas. So like the first two, more sherry bombs, especially the first one. Third one, nice amount of complexity to it. That is really good. So <laughs> this is a tough one. I'd say that one and three are my favorites at this point. This might be a wild card round. Might have to select two out of this because this first one is just Super, super rich sherry. Prunes, figs are so good in it. Chocolate. I mean, I'm, I'm sure one of these is probably a Glendronic and one's probably a Glengoin. I don't know what the other one is. Well, number one's gotta be a front runner for sure. It's just like that super rich, rich sherry. Really good stuff. So I'm gonna advance number one. Now the question is, do I wanna make number three my wild card and advance it also? Because it is also really solid. Should I save the wild card for the last round? Because there's gonna be some good whiskeys in that one too. 
Okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Number one is advancing, and number three, I'm gonna also pick as my wild card advance. So number two is gone. So one and three, one and three moving on from uh, from bracket three. All right, let's see what these are. I'm really excited to see. I think I got at least one of them pegged. All right, so the first class is McCallum 18. Yeah, I was thinking he was either maybe, well, I actually thought it was Glendronic, to be honest with you. Um, wasn't picking up that McCallum characteristic, but I got all the rich, rich sherry from it. Number two was a Glengoyne. I thought maybe it might have been. And number three, the Buna Habit 18. So I, I didn't peg it for Buna 18, I just knew it was super awesome. Uh, so that's awesome. That's some, I'm really happy that I advanced uh, those two whiskeys. Going forward, all right, this is shaping up to be pretty freaking epic final. Uh, let's move on to the last bracket. All right, fourth bracket, uh, here are the whiskeys. Process of elimination, I know what's left here, but I don't know what order they're in. Uh, let's find out class number one. <sighs> really light on the nose. Some like little bit of like lemon and honey. Get like some kind of like um, baked goods kind of thing going in here. A little bit of fruit, a little bit of maltiness, a little bit of like salt. Fairly mild, not too much going on with it. Let's go glass two. Yep, lots of delicious sh sherry notes, some fig, some plum, chocolate, kind of like a Christmas kind of cake going thing going on. It's nice. Number two is really good. All right, number three. This one's gotta be the Talisker. You can tell right away with the peat, that nice like heathered style. So I'm pretty sure this one's the Talisker. I guess it could be the old Pulteney, but I'm pretty sure the first one was the Pulteney. And then the sherry, it's gotta be the Glendronic. I mean, I know what's left, so this has got to be the Glendronic. So I'm going to eliminate number one. Just wasn't feeling it that much. Um, pretty basic in profile. Um, kind of light. Not too much going on with it. Um, not compared to two and three. Two is definitely the Glendronic, as you can tell. I mean, there's lots of sherry aspect going on with this. Pretty sure number three would be the Talisker. And it's got more peat than the first one, so I definitely say that this one would be Talisker. I'm not sure about Pulteney peat level. I think it's very, very low, if any, right? Does Pulteney have peat in it? Now I can't even think. I think they peat their whiskey to like very low PPM, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> 12, 12 sips of whiskey in, it's kind of just like, what? Um, I am taking time out between each one, obviously. Reset the palate, drink some water, um, reset everything. Um, yeah, this one's tough too. I don't know. I mean, I really do like that that peat finish on here. And you know what? The sherry one, now that I know I drank the Mac McAllen 18 in the previous one, I like that way more than this. I know that's a big debate, McAllen 18 versus Glendronic 18. I mean, if you take price out of the equation, it's, it, I mean, I, it's, it's no competition in my opinion, especially those old McAllen's, the old style bottles. Um, you know, this is so solid though. If I had two wild cards, I'd pick both of these to like, move on, but I've only used up the wild card. Okay, I made my decision. I'm gonna go with class three to advance. Um, so class three, we'll move on. Let's see what we got. Pretty sure that's the Talisker. Pretty sure that's the Glendronic. And by process of elimination, that's gotta be the old Pulteney. And I was right, yeah. Pulteney, Glendronic, Talisker. So the Talisker is moving on. The Glendronic, I mean, really good whiskey, but I mean, just my memory of drinking uh, the Macallan the previous round, I like it way more. I, I mean, it's just got more complexity, more boldness, more richness. Even though it's bottled at a lower ABV, um, it delivers for me. I find this like little kind of note in Glendronic sometimes little like uh, bitterness almost. Uh, the McAllen doesn't have that. So the Talisker is moving on. Uh, we got our awesome final here. So Talisker. So representing uh, batch or bracket one was the Springbank 18. Uh, bracket two was the Freud 18. Bracket three was the McAllen 18. And the wild card with the Boonahabin. And then the Talisker um, for bracket four. So that's five whiskeys. Um, I know what they are. I won't know which one I'm drinking when I'm drinking them. Um, before we get into the final, let me tell you what the whiskey community picked as their favorite. 
I put out a poll into the Facebook group Scotch Addicts asking what's your favorite 18 year old. I tallied up all the results. They are right here um, and they like the Glendronic 18 the most. I think that for value uh, you can't go wrong with Glendronic 18 um, especially the releases that came out you know 2018 2019 um, you know those are 23 24 year old whiskey in the bottle um, but we'll see what happens uh, in my final five coming up now all right the final five this actually kind of worked out exactly how I pretty much thought it would um, these are definitely my favorite five I guess you could probably interchange the Glendronic with one of these here or there, but for the most part, these what I say would be my top five uh, asterisks, number six Glendronic, somewhere around here as well. Um, so obviously I know what the last five are, I don't know which order I'm drinking them in. Um, so yeah, let's see what we find out, this has been super awesome so far. Um, this is a uh, glass A. All right, well that's the Lefroy. <laughs> I mean, that's so obvious and this is gonna mess up my palate for the rest of it. Um, I'm not gonna drink this one first. Let's not drink the Lefroy first. Let's go to B. I mean, it's, <laughs> when you have something super peated and the rest of it's like, you know, not heavily, as heavily peated, you can tell right away. All right. Go with this one. That's like melted vanilla ice cream. A little, little twist on the end too. I'm having a hard time picking up notes on this. I just know it's really good. I don't know if it has a really good balance. Um, not one note kind of sticks out. Very well integrated with everything going on with that one. All right, uh, glass C. Rich, rich sherry. Nice um, oakiness on this one. Definitely got some like tannins. For sure. Uh, glass D. Oh, the nose on this is so, so good. Yeah, really good. Picking up a little bit of peat in this one. Really, really good. Loving that one. Loving that one a lot. The thing about blind tasting, you really kind of just have your preference on that day. I know a lot of people think, oh, you know, blind tasting is the way to pick your favorite. And for sure it is because it, it knocks out some of the stigma associated with the bottle. But again, you could do a blind tasting of these five whiskeys on five different days and probably pick, you know, your best one. Maybe it's different each day, you know? Kind of just depends on your mood on your day. The best way to do tastings is do it blind multiple times. If you get the same result, then you know for sure which one you like the most. Class E. Oh, it's so good too. Nice richness to this. I mean, the finish on this is just pure creaminess. Yeah, E is really, really good too. So D and E, I think I'm gravitating a little bit towards um, versus the rest of them. I'll, I'll try A, which I which I know is the the fry. Man, the nose on this on this is so good too. Man. <laughs> okay, that is phenomenal. So I think I'm I'm leaning towards more of the peated stuff right now. Um, so glass B and glass C, um, in my opinion, didn't really have any peat in them. Um, so I'm assuming one of those is the Macallan, for sure. Probably just looking at the color, it's C. Um, but it's not going to be the Macallan for me. I'm not going to be picking that as my favorite because it's not holding up to the rest of these. Um, it's definitely between A, D, and E. So... I know this one is the Freud. I'm assuming one of these is Talisker and one of them is Springbank, which means that one of these three is the Buna. So I'm gonna go try D again and E again. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> Just drinking really nice 18 year old scotch all day. Again, big thank you to Jasper for supplying pretty much all these bottles. It's gonna be a really tough decision. I mean, I pretty much could say all of these are equally as good. But this, this Lefroig. I mean, I think it's got the most going on. It's definitely the boldest out of um, all of these. I'm not necessarily biased against Lefroig 18. Um, 
I mean, I don't think I would pick it as my favorite going into this. I haven't drank it in a while, actually, to be honest with you. I haven't had the Frog 18 in this bottle. It's about here on the fill level. Um, I've had it for a long time, sipped occasionally. I haven't gotten to it in a while. Bought it back out for this. All right, let me deliberate a bit more and uh, I'll make my final decision. All right, I've gone through nosing and tasting a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna say that glass B is my fifth place finisher. So fifth is B. I'm gonna say that glass C is my fourth place finisher. So fourth is C. And then it really came down to, um, you know, third place was close between these two. So I'm going to say that E will be third, but I'm going to go with, uh, I guess that makes D second place. And coming in first is glass A, which I believe is without a doubt the, the Frog 18. Here's the results. Let's find out what we have here. You guys already know, of course because I had it here. Um, <clears throat> yes, A, A was the Lefroig. <clears throat> Excuse me. A is the Lefroig, um, without a doubt. So B was the Buna Haven. Okay, that's what I kind of thought, right? Yeah, I thought that D and E, D was the Talisker. So that's the second place. Talisker, 18 year old, second place. Um, and then right behind it was the Springbank. Honestly, if someone was like, you want a Spring Bank 18 or a Talisker 18, I would say Spring Bank 18. But uh, tonight, it was the Talisker's time to shine. You can't go wrong with Talisker 18. It's a great pour, for sure. Um, so there you have it. McAllen um, coming in fourth place. A bit of a surprise. I think that McAllen 18, these old ones, really, really good. But tonight, the Pete won out for me. Uh, so there it is. The winner, the Lefroy 18-year-old. Um... So there you have it. So there's my top five results doing this semi-blind. Um, if I wasn't doing a blind, I'd probably rank them this order. It's a little bit different. Um, overall, with all 12 bottles, I would probably rank them unblind in this order. And this is how it compares to the whiskey community. Pretty interesting results, um, kind of cool. I might do this again sometime in the future. Maybe switch up the order a little bit more, uh, bring in some different bottles, see if we get the same results or maybe something different. All right, so there you have it. Let me know what you think of the results. Is there anything on this table that you would consider your favorite 18 year old Scotch whiskey? And what did I leave out of this lineup that you think could compete with the rest of these bottles? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel a little bit more, check out Patreon. You can win some amazing samples. Until next time, guys, have a good one. Cheers.